हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री बाय डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर इन द मिनरल सीरीज आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट मिनरल्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एन अदर मिनरल दैट इज कॉपर आई शिल से कॉपर इज एन एसेंशियल मिनरल एंड इज नेचुरली प्रेजेंट इन सम फूड्स एंड इज आल्सो अवेलेबल इन वेरी डिफरेंट डाइटरी सोर्सेस सप्लीमेंट इट इज आल्सो वर्किंग एज ए कोफैक्टर फॉर मेनी एंजाइम्स लेटर ऑन वी विल सी दोज थिंग्स एंड वेयर कॉपर इज वर्किंग एज ए component of uh, enzymes it is called as cupro enzymes uh, there are many uh, reactions many metabolic reactions biochemical reactions are there uh, in either for energy production iron metabolic reactions neuropeptide activations connective tissue synthesis many reactions are there where copper works as a cofactor so what we will see today uh, we will see their sources rda functions and its regulations and some abnormality we will see uh, for the copper so the uh, this is the uh, slightly uh, chemistry about the uh, copper uh, the atomic number of copper is 29 and if you see the electronic configuration uh, is given here uh, this is one kind of transition metals its physical state is uh, solid and its uh, nature is slightly basic uh, here uh, we are having different density valency and electronic configurations normally copper exists in two uh, valence state that is plus 1 and plus 2 uh if we'll say a uh, copper contains roughly our body contains roughly uh, it is one of the very trace element uh, we don't have too much amount of copper in our body so the body contains roughly only 100 mg of copper uh, which is distributed in different tissue uh we need it from the for the normal uh, growth bone strength immune functions and the cardiovascular health formations uh the copper is in one of the integral uh, part cofactor of a group of enzymes called as cupro enzymes which is important for various different processes like if you'll see we are having a uh, copper uh, some of the enzymes which is responsible for energy production in the cells like cytochrome c oxidase uh that in this enzyme requires copper and this is involved in energy production in our cells then uh, we are having lysyl oxidase uh, which is responsible for the formation of a strong and flexible connective tissue and this enzyme also requires copper for as a, as a cofactor then in the terms of iron metabolic processes we require multiple copper oxidases ferro oxidases which requires copper uh, or copper containing protein then normal function of brain or nervous tissue we require dopamine beta hydroxylase cytochrome c oxidase these two hormone uh, enzymes also requires copper for their functions then when we are talking about antioxidant activity we have superoxide dismutase and ceruloplasmin again these two enzyme, uh, enzymes are requiring copper for their activity formation of uh, body pigment that is melanin we require tyrosinase and that is again copper dependent enzymes so we are having different many number of enzymes which is responsible for various different types of functions and they require copper so they are cupro enzymes so copper is one of the very important component important mineral for our body although its uh, presence is in the very less uh, content uh, only we are having 100 mg of copper but that is essential we require it uh, if when when we are talking about the storage of copper in our body the average adult have a total amount of roughly 50 to 120 mg of copper in their body either in the male or in the case of female most of the copper is going to be excreted uh, through the bile and a small amount is also excreted through the urine uh, the fecal loss of copper is of uh, biliary origin and non absorbed dietary copper are about 1 mg per day so the fecal uh, through a stool uh, we are also going to have some loss of copper of the uh, which is from the uh, ori originated from the liver and non absorbed dietary copper are also uh, whatever we are losing through the fecal uh, samples via the stool that is roughly 1 mg per day the copper level uh, in our body is maintained very uh, systematically and that is homeostatic maintenance of copper is done at the two levels one the copper absorption from the intestine so how much copper we are going to absorb uh, that decides means uh, level of maintenance whenever your body requires uh, so accordingly we are going to absorb it and the copper released by the liver into the bile so these are the two process which are normally responsible for the uh, maintenance of copper level in our body when uh, the copper distribution among our body in different tissue roughly i have told you we are having 50 to 100 mg of copper in our body 
at, at this place we have taken 116 mg of copper so uh, bone contains roughly 47 percent of copper which is equal to uh, or roughly equivalent to 46 to 50 mg of copper uh, this is a uh, muscle uh, which is having 27 percent of copper they uh, this is equal to roughly 26 to 27 mg liver having 11 percent of copper that is 10 to 11 mg brain cells or brain have 9 percent of copper that is roughly equal to 8.8 .8 mg of copper and rbc or red blood cells have six percent of copper that is roughly six to seven mg of copper other than these uh, five important tissue other body organs also contain some amount of coppers and that is equal to roughly 13.2 mg of copper uh, the when we are talking about the diff functions of copper we are having very different types of functions is going to be performed by copper uh, it helps in the making of connective tissue later on we will see it helps in the maintenance of our energy level because for in many biochemical reactions for the energy productions they require the enzyme which requires copper it also keeps our healthy function of our brain and nervous systems we have already seen for dopamine formation and other things then it helps our skin uh, for the production of melanin because melan tyrosinase enzyme requires copper and that enzyme is responsible for melanin synthesis it also helps the transportation of iron in our body uh, through ferrodoxins we will see that one also when we are talking in the details uh, the one by one we are going to talk about so copper is an essential constituent of several enzymes like cytochrome oxidase catalase tyrosinase superoxide dismutase monoamine oxidase ascorbic acid oxidase ALA synthase many by all almost all the biochem enzymes are responsible for some or more biochemical reactions so uh, copper is involved in many metabolic reactions Second, if you will see, uh, copper is necessary for the synthesis of hemoglobin, uh, ALA synthase. Uh, this is one of the enzyme which is responsible for heme synthesis. Uh, if you will see the heme synthesis process, so there we require ALA synthase. And this ALA synthase uh, means when we are going to synthesize heme, so that heme is going to give us hemoglobin. So ultimately for hemoglobin synthesis, we require ALA synthase. And this ALA synthase is requiring copper as a their component. So copper is essential for hemoglobin or heme synthesis another is lysyl oxidase which is a copper containing enzyme is required for the conversion of lysy lysine residue either from collagen or from elastin to li lysine so lysine uh, present in the collagen and elastin is converted to li lysine which is required which is compulsory component for the cross linking of these collagen fibers or elastin fibers so if we don't have this lysyl oxidase or non-functional lysyl oxidase we will not have this li lysyl formation and if we don't have li lysyl formation so cross linking will not be there so in that case collagen and elastin fibers will not work another function is ceruloplasmin uh, which is serving as a ferro uh, oxidase uh, if you remember uh, in our uh, iron process iron metabolic process or their uh, absorption and secretions i have told you uh, ferro ferro oxidase is involved in the conversion of Fe2 plus into Fe3 plus and in this form Fe3 plus uh, which which come by going to bind with the transferrin and transported into the plasma so ceruloplasmin is required for the transportation of iron into the plasma copper is also necessary for the synthesis of melanin uh, and phospholipid you have already seen that in the form of tyrosinase enzyme this tyrosinase enzyme requires copper and that is responsible for melanin synthesis for the development of bone and nervous tissue myelin myelin fibers our body needs copper so copper is also for essential for the formation of myelin sheets in the, in the nervous systems and bone formation bone synthesis there are number of proteins we are having which is known uh, means copper containing non enzymatic proteins these are enzymes but there are number of non enzymatic proteins we are having which requires copper which binds with copper for their functions like hepatocuparins that is the storage form in the liver uh, cerebrocuparin that is in the brain and hemocuparin that is in the rbc so these are different non enzymatic proteins has been identified and their functions are not very much clear but they present in different organs of our body uh, hepatocuparin in the liver cerebrocuparin that is into the brain and hemocuparin that is into the rbc 
then uh, hemocyanin that is a copper containing pro uh, protein complex in many vertebr invertebrates which functions like hemoglobin like we are having hemoglobin for oxygen and carbon dioxide transportations or gaseous exchanges similar function will be done by this hemocyanin which is present in many invertebrates and they behave equal to or equivalent to the hemoglobin in vertebrates or different other or then if when we are talking about the different uh, dietary sources of the food uh, these are different food contents having the different kind of number of uh, kind of copper containing foods here i am talking about the 10 different uh, food which have the highest amount of uh, copper like beef liver uh, parsimon uh, dried apricot mushrooms oyster crabs hazelnuts cashew dark chocolate and here we are having different content how much content it is having uh, these coppers uh, the richest source uh, dietary source includes shellfish seeds and nuts organ meats uh, wheat bran cereals uh, whole grain products and chocolates uh, the absorption of copper is strongly influenced by the amount of copper into the diet like when we are having very high amount of copper into the diet absorption process is reduced and when we are having less amount of copper into that absorption process will be very high like uh, bioavailability ranges from 75 percent of the dietary copper when the diet contains 400 mcg microgram per day and it reduces to 12 percent when the diet contains 7.5 mg per day so uh, this is right uh, means absorption depends on the how much copper is present in our your diet tap water and other beverages can also have a copper uh, means a copper presence in the those uh, tap water and other beverages although the amount is very less uh, like it ranges from 0.0005 mg to 1 mg per liter so it is very negligible amount uh, when we are talking about the rda value uh, if you see uh, uh, from birth to uh, adult one means every age we requires as uh, if you see in the lactating case or the pregnant during pregnancy the amount is very high so on an average uh, adult requires roughly 2 to 3 mg per day copper and infants and children requires roughly 0 0.5 to 2 mg of copper per day this is the basic requirement of copper by a normal average human being uh, when we are talking about the deficiency or the disease conditions uh, um, before going to uh, talk about the disease conditions let me talk about the, some of the absorption Roughly 10% of the dietary copper is going to be absorbed and mainly into the duodenal region of the stomach. Uh, metallothionine is a transportation protein that facilitates the copper absorption. So it's called as metallothionine, which is response, which that is a protein which is normally helping uh, copper absorption in our intestine. And there are a number of contents, a number of components like phytates, zinc, and molybdenum these normally decreases the copper absorption the copper concentration of plasma is roughly about 100 to 200 mg per dl most of this 95 percent is tightly bound to the ceruloplasmin that is a copper containing protein and a small fraction that is roughly 5 percent is loosely associated with the albumins so the normal concentration of concentration of serum ceruloplasmin is 25 to 50 mg per dl i have told you uh, whatever copper we are having into the circulations, 95% is associated with celluloplasmins and 5% is associated with albumin. The celluloplasmin concentration is roughly 25 to 50 mg per dl and it contains 0.34% copper. Now come to the DGG state. Uh, copper deficiency is normally very uncommon into the in, in, in the humans. Uh, based on the studies in uh, animals and human. Uh, the effect of copper deficiency includes anemia, hypopigmentations uh, because here blood cells will blood will not form, hemoglobin will not form, here melanin will not form, hypercholesterolemia and abnormal lipid metabolic processes, connective tissue disorders because collagen and elastin fiber will not form. It requires in bone formation, so osteoporosis and other bone defects will cause ataxis, ataxia and increased risk of infection will be there. So these are when copper deficiency is there. Uh, these uh, group of risk of copper in adequation or deficiency can be in the mostly occurs in the people we having celiac disease 
or people with the main cage disease or people are taking high dose of zinc supplement. I have already told you zinc is going to decrease the absorption of copper. So a person who takes high amount of zinc supplement, they are having, they are deficient of cow copper. Okay. Uh, now, what is main cage disease? Uh, uh, celiac disease, uh, you are only associated with the uh, gluten intolerance. Uh, then main cage disease, that is another a disease which is associated with the copper deficiency. Uh, this disease is normally caused due to the defect in the intestinal absorption of copper. So when we are having defect in the absorption, less absorption will be there. Uh, Menke disease is going to be caused. It is possible that copper may be trapped by metallothionine in the intestinal cells. And the symptoms of Menke disease includes decreased copper in the plasma and urine. Anemia and uh, depigmentations of hair will be there. So Menke disease is normally it is a very rare X-linked recessive disorder and of copper homeostasis caused by a specific mutation in a specific gene that is called ATP7A mutations in the ATPA gene. Second disease we have that is uh, Wilson's disease that is also called as hepatolenticular degenerations. Uh, in this case it is a rare disease roughly occurs occurrence is 1 into 50,000 of abnormal copper metabolic. Uh, metabolic uh, copper is deposited uh, in the abnormal amount in the liver and lenticular nucleus of the brain uh, low level of uh, in this case low level of copper and celluloplasmin in plasma and increased excretion of copper uh, uh, increased excretion of copper into the urine uh, copper deposition in the kidney can occur and that is going to damage the kidney and when kidney is going to be damaged, it leads to the increased excretion of amino acids, glucose, peptides, hemoglobins, or number of other things into the urine. So urine will have amino acids, urine will have peptides, urine will have glucose, urine will have hemoglobins and blood cells. Uh, intestinal absorption of copper is very high, uh, about roughly four to six times higher than the normal. And the probable cause of uh, Wilson's disease can be uh, like uh, a failure to synthesize celluloplasmin or an uh, impairment in the binding capacity of copper. So either uh, we synthesize less amount of uh, celluloplasmin or there will be impairment in the binding capacity of copper or sorry or there is a mutation in the gene encoding copper binding ATPH. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, these are the different uh, causes of uh, the possible reasons for the uh, Wilson's disease. Uh, some workers suggest that the reduced intestinal excretion of copper may be responsible for the occurrence of Wilson's disease. So, uh, means uh, reduced uh, intestinal ab uh, absorption, where means maximum will be absorbed, excretion will be very less. Uh, what is the treatment? Uh, normally, administration of penicillamine, uh, that is a naturally occurring copper chelating agent is used for the treatment of Wilson disease. So penicillamine is used as a treatment. What is this is penicillamine's structure if you will see and this is going to chelate calcium uh, sorry copper. Uh, this is penicillamine uh, we are having uh, one methyl group another methyl group so two methyl group is here and then this is the central carbon which is uh, this place this is SH sulfidyl group here and then we are having uh, CHNH2. So here we are having CHNH2 and COH. This is penicillamine. So this is the same structure. This penicillamine, uh, two molecule of penicillamine is going to combine with copper. So copper is chelated in between the two amount molecule of penicillamine. So uh, copper will be chelated and it will not be available. So this is uh, penicillamine actually is a, is a, is a copper chelating agent. Normally it is not only copper chelating agent, it is used for uh, chelation for many metal ions. So many places we are going to use this pencil ions. So this is all about uh, copper, their uh, DGG condition, their abnormal number of almost all the information about the copper. If you have any query, any comments, you can write in the comment box. Uh, you can follow me on various social networking sites and these are the different uh, uh, IDs for this one. Uh, all the comments are uh, I'm trying to answer all the comments uh, now YouTube have also activated the thanks button on my YouTube channel so if you like really like the video if you want to support it you can click on the thanks button and you can support thank you very much have a nice day